26 minutes after the hour of 7, and we're going to dive right into yet another conversation. We're focusing on the Caribbean and Pacific Agro-Food Forum. It's coming up, well, it started on the 2nd of November and runs right through to the 6th right here in Barbados. And to tell us about it, we have Michael Hailu with us, the Director of Technical Center for Agricultural and Rural Corporation, or the CTA. Good to have you here. And we also have Mr. Jethro Green with us, Chief Coordinator of the Eastern Caribbean Trading Agriculture Development Organization. It's a mouthful, but you've got a big role as well. Good morning yeah. to you. Good morning. All right. Well, let's discuss, um, first of all, uh, your work in the sector. Let's, let's start with you, uh, Mr. Hailu. Tell us about your, your work, your role in all this. Yes. Uh, my organization, it's... Mm -hmm. uh, called the Technical Center for Agricultural Rural Cooperation. We are based in uh, the Netherlands and we're an intergovernmental organization working under what's known as the ACP, African Caribbean Pacific Group that brings 79 countries mm -hmm. and the European Union. So our role is really to uh, support farming communities in Africa, Caribbean and Pacific mm -hmm. to produce more better foods and to also uh, make agriculture profitable right. for smallholder farmers. I'm glad you said that. You talked about the profitability in agriculture. Um, how practical is, is, is that goal when, when, when you consider you know, the, the thrust from developed countries to try and push their agricultural products on, on a developing uh, world? Gentlemen, how, how, who wants to respond to that? Well, okay. Well, first of all, I should say, by organization that you just read out is the executive of the Caribbean Farmers Network, and mm -hmm. that's what I'm representing. Mm -hmm. Barbados Agriculture Society, who mm -hmm. is hosting, mm -hmm. who is one of the coordinators for this event, mm -hmm. is a director of the, the Caribbean Farmers Network. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, whoever controls food and water control power, every country mm -hmm. must make an effort to have uh, the basic food security mm -hmm. and food and nutrition security intact. And the Caribbean, and that's what we're fighting. Mm -hmm. We're building a platform with the help of CTA, mm -hmm. And many partners like um, AICA, mm -hmm. FAO, mm -hmm. CADI, universities, mm -hmm. COLA, PCP, etc., mm -hmm. to ensure that we have successful, profitable business mm -hmm. in agriculture and also to strengthen our food, regional food and security. Does mm -hmm. this also mean that you're, you're working on partnerships across the region, then, not just with those organizations necessarily, but looking at what Caribbean nations have, what, what strengths? to maybe look at um, really making the Caribbean single market work. We have the most nutritious food. A lot mm -hmm. of our food that we have thrown away, our roots and tubers, our mangoes, etc. Mm -hmm. They are the nutritious foods. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we are aiming to promote at this workshop. Mm -hmm. for, for example, 56% of the deaths in the region is from non-communicable disease, bad eating habit, mm -hmm. all the junk no, food that we import from overseas, this, our salty food. Mm -hmm. Why we allow or beautiful, healthy food, which the, 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 the research are showing, mm -hmm. the yams, the dashi, the That's sweet potatoes, are these to. are the things but that, how do you that create health in the nation. We, we know all of that. The problem is how do you change the culture and the mindset of, say, for example, wealthy um, landowners who want to use the land for, for housing development and another development? How do you change the mindset of the average Caribbean person who rather see a big, lovely tomato from, mm -hmm. from the United States or, or some other juicy looking English <laughs> apple or one of those other things rather than the, thing, than the golden apple and the other things that we produce? Partnership. Mm -hmm. You've got to build partnership with the chefs. You've got to get the chefs to prepare our mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. You got to get our sports persons to, pro to promote our foods, mm -hmm. just like what they did in America with milk. Mm -hmm. You got to right now one of the things at this workshop they're going to have a chef program. Bring all the chefs together to utilize a lot of the roots and tubers, a lot of the local foods. Mm -hmm. Make them into tasty dishes so that our young people. We have had a, a few serving of that at the workshop: sweet mm -hmm. potatoes, yams. Mm -hmm. I'm sure mm -hmm. Michael, you could mm -hmm. talk a lot well, about I that. Well, I think also mm -hmm. you see what's important is the government policy, and mm -hmm. it's very important that the governments in the region mm -hmm. give priority to uh, supporting agriculture. Because yes. unless that happens, it's also very difficult mm -hmm. for the local farmers to compete with what's being imported from outside. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think that that's very critical. Also, I think in this uh, forum, what we're trying to do is to bring experience from other islands like the Pacific and the Indian Ocean Islands so that they can also share okay. their experience with, mm -hmm. the, with the Caribbean. And you're not necessarily talking about cutting out completely maybe that English apple that people like, but 
cutting down and, and growing more and for us to consume more of what we grow, yes? Yes, you know, basically, I mean, if you look at now, the, the Caribbean imports about 5 billion US dollars of uh, food every year mm -hmm. uh, to feed the, you know, the local population as well as the tourist industry. So even if it, part of that can be supplied from local sources, yeah. you know, it could make a huge difference for the economy as well as for the nutrition, you know, the health. Of the population. A, a significant amount of that uh, could, could be saved, and it, I, and I'm and I'm wondering because you hear everyone talking about getting the chefs to to serve this stuff to to all the visitors to our shores. What happens if we start eating it as opposed to you know to, to the Irish potatoes or French fries, yes, sweet agreed. potato fries, breadfruit fries, yes, all of those kinds of things? If we start true. eating it because we consume more than the visitor, you know that could have a significant yeah. impact. And the media have a real strong role to play in this. Yeah, if you got money and buy some ads, we can we can play the part. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, no, um, yeah, the partnerships. Is that, yes, that's, partnerships. Is, is that what mm -hmm. we talked about? But how do you how do you change the culture? How do you, how do you get um, little children to start appreciating a nice sour sauce punch or or you know that kind of thing? Start at the kindergarten level. Start mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. If you change, if you start to work early on the children, for example, in preschools in school feed program, mm -hmm. start to introduce these dishes. Mm -hmm. Once you introduce them with partnership with the media to promote them, mm -hmm. people develop into these. I have no, we, we know how for, um, schools in Guyana and different places that we're working with mm -hmm. who are using cassava flour, who are using uh, sweet potato flour. Mm -hmm. We right now have a program um, working with CABA and the FAO where they're trying to blend cassava, mm -hmm. potato flour mm -hmm. with wheat flour mm -hmm. to make it more nutritious. Mm -hmm. and, and these things are taken up, but it requires government policy, government incentive. It requires joint effort with the private sector. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are trying to build, mm -hmm. partnership for that trust. As we continue all these discussions about this agri-food um, sector, what, what can you tell us about maybe some of the hindrances or the challenges of farmers in the region? Well, I think some of the issues that we are discussing um, this week is farmers, especially smallholder uh, farmers, have a big challenge getting access to finance. So if they want to develop their farms, it's very difficult for them yeah. to borrow money from the banks because the banks, they mm -hmm. think that agriculture is risky uh, and the farmers don't have collateral and all that. So we are looking at you know, some innovative ways of making finance available to farmers. Are, are you in a position to mention any of this possible type of funding right now and whether this will also be there for those who want to create the processing plants because that, I, uh, from what I know, is a part of the challenge as well? Well, w one of the keys is organization. You know, uh, regional organizations like CAFAN, mm -hmm. if they uh, make sure that their, their members are well organized, they come together. Uh, go to the banks and there are also development organizations like the EU mm -hmm. which make it easier for uh, farmers to borrow money because mm -hmm. they provide some support guarantee schemes that can you know that can make it easier for farmers to borrow so that we're looking at different ways and everyone is really keen to support nice what, uh, in initiative. what other areas are you, are you discussing during this forum what other issues well, again, I know, as I said, uh, this whole issue of, uh, you know, the finance issue, we're looking at, for example, young people, how do you get them really interested mm -hmm. in, in to go into agriculture, mm -hmm. using see. technologies, mm -hmm. you know, the adding value to the whole uh, production process. So it's mm -hmm. not just farming, but mm -hmm. the whole process, you know, uh, farm to fork, you know, mm -hmm. we look at the whole, the entire process yeah. well, so that uh, people become more interested in, uh, in farming. Excellent. Well, the forum has already begun, but it goes until the 6th. Mm -hmm. So is it too late if persons hearing this discussion want to be a part of anything? Are there any opportunities for some of those farmers or anyone interested or the public generally. to come mm -hmm. and, and hear or be a part of at this point? Well, we still have, uh, especially the last two days on mm -hmm. Thursdays and, and, and Friday, we'll have uh, an open forum focusing very much on agribusiness development for the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So the, there will be quite a good opportunity for some people Where to Where will this take place? Come. It's at the LESC, is it? Uh, oh, Lloyd's Skin Sanford, Sanford Center. Center. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All okay. right. Sounds good. It was really interesting. This is a conversation that, that needs to continue because, I, I, you know, I feel very passionate about the, the development of agriculture and the resurgence of agriculture if we were to survive. And it yeah. can help us grow out of poverty. 
grow out of the depression <laughs> That's the take away. economically. <laughs> yes. All right, <laughs> gentlemen. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Hello and Jethro Green, good talking with you this morning. And we just hope that people listening will will remember the importance of agriculture to our, our economies. Yes. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to go across the street to the University of Parkinson in the Pine to hear some beautiful music in a moment.